is. I'd do anything for her. Got a father of the bride chat lined up for later, haven't we, Jimbo? Oh, you needn't worry about James. He'll take good care of Irwin. I'm delighted he's finally met the right woman. God knows there have been some false storms along the way. No. <gasps> Stick with me, kid. I am. Believe me, I am. You're beginning to frighten me. Me? Yeah. It's just a harmless bit of fun. You know, I didn't think I could get into this. Didn't think it would be my thing. Turns out it is. Who knew? Not the boys, that's for sure. Come on. Sorry, Bill. I've had to take one for the team. Things quite serious. It's pain, Charles. A hamstring. Always gives me jip. First I've heard of it. Yes, well, I'm usually too brave to mention it. And Agatha's on fire. She's like a woman possessed. Whose idea was it to give her a gun? Well, Erwin thought it would be a good icebreaker, to which you replied, marvellous. And what else? Oh, yeah, that we'd give the lot of them a right good spanking. Yes, well, on reflection, it was perhaps a tad rash. It's very good of James to invite me. Feel like one of the fam. Yeah, wouldn't miss this for the world. I told James I'm a busy man, but he would insist. Making up the numbers. <laughs> oh! 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 I don't think any of us are cut out for this. We could just surrender. No, no, no. We can do this. Never give up. Never give in. Never say die. Come on. You don't think you're taking this just like a little bit too seriously? No, of course I'm not. Am I? Wouldn't have anything to do with James's impending nuptials, would it? It's got nothing to do with his nuptials. It makes absolutely perfect sense that he's marrying into outdoor events. You know what with his whole army thing. I guess uh, I think it'd be understandable if you felt a bit strange about it. You see, I don't feel strange about it. There may have been a time I might have felt strange, but right now I don't feel strange about it. Okay? But come on, go. Remember, stay together, stay in formation. Go be yours. I wish I did. Well, aren't we outnumbered, though? No. Milks doesn't count. These hands, they are trained for battle. So these arms can bend a bow or something. What's it, Sam? Something or other. Someone's been talking to Sarah. Yes, she gave me a right old pep talk. Right, come on. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> Already. Well, I can't shoot you, can I? Aw, that's far sweet. That is the point of the game. It's all right. You can come out from behind the tree. You've got me. It's fair cop, Hopper. I 
do not believe this. Let's get you in the house. Every time there's trouble, guess who's there? supposed to know it wasn't Charles. I was in the zone. Hmm. The wrong zone, as it turned out. Agatha, this is my first wedding as a vicar, and it's James. I don't want any trauma. I don't want anything to go wrong. Trauma? Little old me. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Apart from splatting the braid with paint and shooting the groom, obviously. <laughs> James is staying with you, right? How's he doing? Fine. Until I mentioned the best man's speech, which is tricky, to say the least. I mean... We don't know, Erwin. It's difficult to know how to pitch it. I mean, does she even have a sense of humour? What about some Welsh jokes? Absolutely. Well, they are going to honeymoon in Wales. How are they? Yes. Oh. So I said to James, what are you going to do after the wedding? And he said, I'm going to bang her for a fortnight. Oh, that's so <laughs> lovely. Jess and I went there on our way to London. No. No. Oh. Well, let's hope that he gets to go on honeymoon this time. Seemed to work out well for you, I recall. <laughs> Yachida. <laughs> Gently does it now. What happened? Now, before you go pegging your needle in the red zone, there's been a bit of an accident, but it's all sorted now. What kind of an accident? Is Erin okay? She is. All fine and dandy. James came off worse, so stop fussing. Deep breath. Better. Except I have the mother of all flushes. Oh, my head is raging. I made some special tea. You just make sure that you sip it throughout the day. Oh, brilliant. I don't know what I'd do without you. Spontaneously combust, I'd say. Well. Now, the drinks are all here, unpacked and stacked. Caterers fully briefed. And the flowers will be arriving later. As will the gorgeous lead singer of the band. He said he wants to drop his kit off. I said, don't you mind me. You drop your kit off any time you like, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Not a list or an HRT patch in sight. Well, I told you, don't let the change rearrange you. You know, I think it's best you see the doctor, just to be on the safe side. Don't be daft. It's like Monty said, it's age and stage. Well, I'll pop this dress downstairs and then I'll be off. Before you ask, it's all been sorted. The energies are all wrong. I've got a bad feeling about all this. Nonsense. Right now, the only fermented drink you need is this. Here's to tomorrow. Cheers. I think you have an admirer. I don't think you might be right. No, not him. Him. Oh, God help me. Not him again. Oh, Agatha! Oh. Not being funny, right? But I was absolutely tamping at first. Tapping. Angry. Extremely, apparently. I'm not going to lie, raging I was. But then I had a little word with myself, and I thought, well, well it was hilarious, see? Did you? Oh, I'm dying to meet oh, you. Uh... <laughs> We're the same, me and you. Yeah. I can be a little bit tapped myself and a bit chopsy, like. Oh, well, she's chopsy, all right. Anyway, fair dues. Let's get around in, shall we? Drink to on me! <laughs> <laughs> now then. I've got these lush sachets for you all to wear. Oh, Sylvain Dubois, friend of Irwin's, business associate of her father. I'm working with him on opening an outdoor events site in Nantes. Oh. I introduced these two in Paris. Ah. ah, so it's all down to you, is it? So tell me, it's all very sudden, isn't it? I mean, she's not, um, 
you know. I mean, he's not just, you know, doing the honorable thing, is he? Charles. What? Not at all. I knew that it would be love at first sight, and I was right. <laughs> it was. Cupid himself. <laughs> Sir Charles Frey. Agatha Raisin, pleased to meet you. Carsley's very own sex pot. Oh, Charles, seriously, is that the best you've got? Yeah, sorry, I'm saving one of my best lines for the speech. <laughs> oh, yes. The Agatha. Uh, you and James were... Uh... Over a very long time ago. L'histoire! <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you like history too? Erwin has a PhD in it. That's what brought her to Paris. You? Me? No. History, no. Probably more of a here and now, just sort of, you know, be in the moment, that sort of thing. Charles, yes? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lovely, isn't she? Yes, she is. Yes, lovely. I mean, who'd have thought it? James bags himself a wonderful woman, and I couldn't be happier. Mm. <laughs> Oh, 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 incoming at two o'clock. Quick, quick, quick. Let's get a drink. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> That's the lot. Can't wait till tomorrow. Imagine, Mrs. James Lacey. I promise to stand by me, James, no matter what, till death do us part. Of course I do. Promise me, James, whatever happens. Do you promise? Mm. Your dad, if you're wanting our little chat. Mm. I say you promise. I promise? What's this about? I'm not a fan of wedding day surprises. Everything all right? I'll tell you after the wedding. Right! This one's a banger! This is about the whole paintball splatty thing. I'm sorry, okay? It isn't. I thought I'd say hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Everything all set for tomorrow, then? I believe so. Are you okay with it? You know what? I am. Yeah. I mean, Erwin's gorgeous and lovely. And what with mad Mary misfortune and me. How did you pull that one off? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Lucky, I guess. Well, it's nothing less than you deserve. This is your chance, James, for lifelong happiness. Just don't mess it up like well you know I won't think I'm ready thank you well it's not to thank me just out of interest what are you thanking me for <laughs> for just being you mm. for being there <laughs> after everything we've been through wedding that never was honeymoon in cyprus it, well i think the less said about that the better we have been through rather a lot you and i haven't we whatever way you look at it i think maybe it was preparing me for this moment maybe i wasn't ready before to be honest 
Bill's insurance ever going to be? And then Erwin came along. And you decided to copy that DM? <laughs> exactly. If you and I hadn't made such a pig's ear of everything, I wouldn't be here now. So thank you. My pleasure. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Oh! Ah! Charles, what in God's name are you doing? I have no idea. I didn't marry anyone, did I? Oh, my head is banging. <laughs> that was about a night, though. I oh, knew, Charles, all that business with a wedding ring. What business? The trick you did. Tended to swallow the ring and then using sleight of hand at last minute to magic it away. It was insane. Charles, you didn't swallow the ring, did you? <laughs> of course not. <gasps> oh, yeah, there was something else. I can faintly remember you mooning and dancing on the village green, which might explain the loss of your trousers. <laughs> oh, that'll serve you right. The plain kiss chase for Mrs. Boggle. <laughs> James and hello wife so tell me how are you feeling excited anxious oh, <laughs> lovely oh thank you autumn's up morning all ready willing and able and reporting for duty good god who dug you up and where are your trousers absolutely no idea but it's perfectly fine because uh hmm. it's a big part of my role today to make James look good. Oh, I think you're winning by a distance on that score. As long as you've got the ring, that's all that matters. Of course I have the ring. It hasn't left my personage all night. Oh, I should have brought more glasses. We could have had the wedding right here. Charles. I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. Yes, I know. Charles in charge equals hell. No. Goodness knows what his best man's speech is going to be like. Agatha! Oh. I'm so sorry, James. There's been an incident. 
Erwin's been killed. This way. Any need to help? Are you okay? Try to be. Have to be. This is uh, Agatha. Uh, she's a private investigator. She helps solve murders. Whoever did this to James, and of course to yourselves, must be brought to justice. I couldn't agree more. Whatever it takes. I just... I don't understand. Why would anyone want to hurt Erwin? I have no idea. I mean, had she fallen out with anyone recently? Did she have any enemies? Of course not. Not a bad bone in her body. And how was Erwin within herself recently? She was the happiest I've ever seen her. Did you notice anything unusual at all? I mean, anything, anything at all? No. Although I did notice someone skulking near the perimeter fence yesterday. Oh, so sorry. It's just a shock. I guess. Not to mention these hot flushes that are driving me mad. The skulking man, can you describe him at all? He was wearing jeans and a hoodie, so I didn't get a good look, really. Right. Okay. What about security footage? We don't have any here at the house. Only at the site, really. Hang on. There was something. Something she wanted to tell me yesterday. Said it could wait till after we were married. Any idea what that may have been? Probably about her track record, see? Who are you? And what track record would that be? Reese is my son. And I suspect he's referring to the fact that Erwin wasn't very good at making it down the aisle. She'd been jilted at the altar. Twice before. Really? Did you know about this, James? Nothing. I shouldn't have mentioned it. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Make sure there was no funny business this time. So what's happened? She done the jilting this time then? She's been murdered. Huh. You know, it seemed too bothered about it, Reese. Do you mind telling me where you were last night and first thing this morning? Um, I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. What have we got? Uh, uh, uh. That's the head and the body and the arms. And I'm just going to do a little bit more of the hair. I meant, do we know what happened to Erwin? Oh, that. Oh, gunshot wound to the back. Now, watch and learn. From the position the body fell, I'd say the murderer was stood here. Too close. Here. Possibly here. Or behind that plant. We'll need the names and addresses of both our exes, obviously. Why didn't she tell me? I guess she didn't want to put ideas into your head. Or you think bad of her? No. Uh, nothing could be further from my mind. I would never jilt anyone. She could have told me. Why do you think her ex has called it off at the last minute? We don't know. 
For sure. We never really got to the bottom of it, did we, Monty? Disappeared faster than rats desert in a sinking ship, they did. Tell me, what's the deal with Captain Santa Pants out there? Not exactly rending his undergarments in grief, is he? Reese is Reese. Lower unto himself, that one. He means well. He's just a little bit too laid back for his own good. He's identifying as an abstract artist these days. One word for it. How did the abstract artist get along with his sister? Step sister. Monty and Olivia only got together five years ago, didn't he? That's right. Reese is mine from my first marriage. I'll get those addresses that you need. Uh, Karim Khan owns a restaurant and Paula Bassi works for a bank, I think. This is definitely from whence the fatal shot was fired. We found the smoking gun. As in the mysterious shadowy clue that will lead me inexorably to the murderer. No, as in the murder weapon. It's a gun with smoke residue around its nozzle. It's in the greenhouse round the back. Messenger, but we're a man down. Charles. Hangover from Hal has kicked in. Listen, I have had hangovers where my hair hurts. I have no sympathy. Now, I want you to talk to these people, see if anyone saw anything, heard anything, comings, goings, toings, froings. Yeah, we'll do. Has anyone checked her diary? What? Well, she had a diary with her in the pub. Really? Yeah, she saw me looking at it and she didn't look too happy. Very well observed. We need to get hold of that. It's going to take five minutes. No, you won't. Come on, step to it. Time is of the essence. Go, go, go. All right, all right. James. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. You do such a thing. It's unbelievable. Who's that? And what the Keskasika say Katha is she doing with the French man? It's Jane. Jane Walters. She's the help in general factotum. Okay. Make a pardon? The housekeeper. Salt of the earth and all round good egg. Oh, my dear Lord, James. Oh. I have no words, which is unusual for me, because I'm a talker. It's just utterly dreadful. You must be Agatha. I mean, we've had a couple of false starts, wedding-wise, but this... About that, did uh, you get to meet any of James's predecessors? No, none of us did. Erwin never brought them home. I don't think Monty approved. Then again, Monty doesn't approve of anyone. Did Erwin seem okay to you recently? Oh, my sweetheart, yes. Absolutely besotted she was. I've never seen her happier. Elle était foulement amoureuse de toi. It's very sweet of you to say. Yeah, it's absolutely very sweet. Well, I best get in. Olivia's nerves will be shattered. Bless her. She's been struggling lately. God knows what this will do to her. What did he say? That um, Erwin was madly in love with me. So, the caterers and florists weren't there at the time of the murder, and Olivia Jones confirms that the diary went everywhere with Erwin, but doesn't know where it is now. That diary? It could reveal a whole host of personal truths. We really need to find it. But check with Jane... What's it? See if she knows its whereabouts. What with her being Miss Obi-Wan Factotum and all that. Right, OK, suspects. Where did you get those? I just... what? Just a few bits that I picked up along the way, you know. As one does. Right, anyway, let's start with the ex fiances Karim Khan. Paul Abassi. Now we have their work addresses, so that is where we will start. That will be our first port of call. Stepbrother. Hippy dippy, horny horse, arty farty. Reese. 
clearly not that close to Erwin because he barely flinched when he heard about her death. Plus, he is a shifty piece of shiftiness. Right, the Frenchman. He knows Erwin and he is way too good looking for my liking. He's way too smooth. He's way too charming. He's definitely got an eye for the ladies. Speaking of ladies, is, uh, is Charles here yet? Is he never met about Charles? We're talking about him. Who is he? What do we know about him? Hmm. Right. Jane. All round good egg, apparently. Big personality. And uh, a little bit too close to the Frenchman, methinks. Right. Anybody else? Hmm. The parents, I guess. The parents. Surely not. James. Someone has killed the woman you were about to marry. We cannot rule anyone out. Now, how... How do we get in with the parents? I don't know. Um, Sheila gets on very well with them. Great idea. Sheila can get in with the parents because she gets right under people's skin and right up their noses. Okay. Any more for any more? No need anyone? for any more of that. We're here to make an arrest. And it gives me no great pleasure to tell you that the murderer is in this very room. <laughs> Who is it? You may ask, and I may answer, Jack Hughes. Wait, Jack who? Hey, wait a minute. Even by your own astounding standards of police work, this is utter nonsense. Thank you very much. Seriously, though, based on what evidence? Well, actually, an eyewitness claims they saw James at the window outside Erwin's bedroom from which she was shot. Yeah, have that, lacy cakes. Oh, it's nice. Who made those? Mrs. Sparkle. Just get out. Just shoot. According to Monty, a guy who runs this place, Karim Khan... Oh, can you dial it down a bit, Agatha? Well, he was engaged to Erwin about 18 months ago. Thoughts? Or is your gin-soaked brain too delicate to cope? Well, I'm not a fan already. Far too much jus on the menu. Fair to middling, trying oh, to be Michelin. Ah, Mr Khan. Not that fat-fingered culinary numbskull. I'm the Kareem Khan. And this waste of space should be in the kitchen prepping asparagus. Unless he wants to lose those teeth he spent a fortune on. Go! Go, go, go! It's all about the bends. <laughs> Keep them on their toes. How can I help? Um, if it's a booking, I'm afraid I don't have anything before 2.30. It's not, actually. It's, uh, it's about Erwin Jones. Ah. Little Miss Ares herself. How is she? She's... Sorry, did you say Ares? Well, when I knew her, there was talk of her getting a share in the family firm. So? How is she? Dead, I'm afraid. Murdered, in fact. And we just wondered if you knew anything about that. Of course not. Why would I? Well, she was due to get married, and we understand that was something that you were planning to do with her at one point. Just wondered why you called it off. What business is that of yours? Well, it might be of some relevance, you know, jealous former lover, that sort of thing. With a bit of a temper. Listen, I haven't seen Owen since we broke it off. And I don't take kindly to people swanning into my restaurant and accusing me of murder. So if you don't mind, there's the door. You can shut it on your way out. Manager remembered Erwin, but says her ex, Paula Bassi, quit suddenly six months ago and didn't leave a forwarding address. No one knows where he is. You okay? What? Yeah, yeah. Just it makes you think, doesn't it? Here today, gone tomorrow. One of us could get hit by a bus any second. Or we could just cross the road sensibly. I can't help feeling for James. I mean, one minute your future in front of you, and then the next it's gone. Just like that. Guess we just gotta live for today. Make it count. I imagine that's why James grabbed his moment with Erwin. You don't want to get married, do you? Me? No. You? Oh, God, no. 
I mean, can you imagine spending the rest of your life with the same person? I can't say I've given it much thought. Yeah, me neither. I mean, leave it to the olders, eh? It's just a bit of paper anyway, isn't it? Right. And of course, it totally depends on meeting the one. The one? Whoever the one is. I guess. We should... We should get back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cars that way. Oh, uh, don't worry, Sarah. I'm sure there'll be other weddings. Oh, I know. I was just so looking forward to this one. But James, if nothing else. I'm so sorry. <sighs> well, I take it James hasn't been able to convince Wilkes of his innocence yet, then? Not yet. But common sense will prevail, eventually. Well, he is still a person of interest. And it does beg the question, what was he doing outside a window in the wee small hours? Probably nerves. Only natural in the light of previous incidents. Oh, water under the bridge, Sheila. Oh, water under the bridge. Late night, was it? It was, actually. Hmm. Where did you end up, then? Nowhere. Just a little nightcap. Mm. Wasn't a crime the last time I looked. Mm. Not the old dog yet, eh? No joy on Paul Lavassi. Quit his job six months ago. No forwarding address, but we're looking into him. How did you get on? Well, we crossed swords with quick-tempered Karim. Charles spoke to one of his cronies who runs the fiddlers and said that he's all, no, 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 all mouth and no trousers. But what his big mouth did say was that Erwin was going to get shares in the family business. Hmm. I wonder what the stepbrother made of that. Probably not much. The reason Monty aren't close. Monty certainly doesn't want him anywhere near the business. And do you know this? How? I instinct? Hmm. Well, I prefer nosy, but... So if Monty was about to cut in Erwin, it is his daughter, after all. That would give Reese a motive. OK, I need to go and talk to Rhys. So any other little pearls you might want to share with us about the Joneses? Not really. Just that they only met five years ago, moved here from Wales last year to set up Go Nuts, got the impression it wasn't really Irwin's thing. No. Not the outdoorsy type, I suppose. But I reckon she's the type that would write anything down in a journal. We need to find that diary. Yes, we do. So I want you to go to the manor house, have a little bit of a snoop around, see if you can find it. And would you just try and distract Olivia and Monty? Well, of course I can. If it means helping my brother. Oh, well, I'll come with you. Nothing else to do now there's no wedding. Oh. So, let me get this straight. Your parents live in a big old fancy house and you live here, on a little boat. For the company of the Roach. They come here in their hundreds, they do. Keep you calm. Very poetic. Fancy the life of the impoverished artist, do we? Prefer the peace and quiet. Only agreed to stay at the manor last night because of the wedding there wasn't. So where were you first thing this morning when Erwin was shot? In bed, obviously. Obviously. And can anyone vouch for that? Nope. Oh, hang on a sec. Maybe. There was someone, I think. I can't really remember, to be honest. Very convenient. So tell me, you and Erwin have known each other for five years, is that right? Not even that. She went around to begin with. She was off travelling when Monty and Mam got together. She tipped up about six months later, a few months after they got married. The apple of her father's eye. Is that why he was thinking about giving her a share in the company? Didn't know he was. Is that a fact? Yep, it is. Need to ask him. Well, I'm asking you. You can't have been very happy giving over a great big portion of the company to your stepsister. <laughs> and I've been bothered by all that stuff. Not my thing, really. I prefer to lose myself in art. Efficiency. <sighs> Getting another beer. You fancy one? No, thank you. 
Are you expecting company? There's a, there's a rather dubious looking character lurking at about 12 o'clock or 10 past 12. I suppose it depends on the way you're standing. Over your left shoulder, over there, look. Look, jeans and a hoodie. Any idea who he could be? Not a clue. Only one way to find out, though. Jeans and a hoodie. Hiya! Oh, the second fiancé. Nice to meet you. Agatha Raisin. 